It was a busy week for President Trump and a frenzied week for everyone who hates him. Ever since President Trump took office, the left has been totally obsessed with all things Russia. But this week, following the president's meeting with Vladimir Putin, their Russia hysteria reached all new levels of crazy. Watch this. Did the president uh, share classified information with Putin? Uh, did the president take other steps beyond those that he took so publicly to undermine the security of the United States? This president is very happy making himself a, a client of Vladimir Putin. Uh, who knows what they talked about behind closed doors? In intel language and parlance, it, it's, uh, it, the president is acting like he is the asset for Russia. We are in a 9-11 national emergency because our country is under attack, literally. There seems to be no rational explanation for President Trump's behavior. And so, millions of Americans are left wondering if Putin indeed has something over the president. Naturally, the mainstream media was even worse. Take a look at this. This was a blatant uh, submission to a, a genuine foe of our country. Vladimir Putin has been invited to Washington. Perhaps Donald Trump will give him the keys to the city or uh, perhaps more importantly, the keys to some ballot boxes. I don't think it's extreme to use that, that treason word. It's, you know, adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. I have no trepidation at all about assigning that treason word. We, it is no different that had somebody attacked the United States with missiles. It's just as serious to me as the Cuban Missile Crisis in terms of an attack or the 9-11 attack, the Pearl Harbor attack, Kristallnacht. When do we see almost a shadow government come out and say, we cannot side with the government? Treason, bribery, and high crimes and misdemeanors. Treason. Treason, yeah. Joining us now to weigh in on all of this absurd rhetoric is a counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway. Hello, Kellyanne. Uh, Hi. You know, as I listened to that rundown of comments, I couldn't help but think, you know, treason is an offense for which you can receive the death penalty. Are they looking for this president to get the death penalty? Oh, but for a media that is so precise about the language they always want to hear from everyone who works here, Boy, do they just toss words into the uh, salad bowl and mix as they want to come out with a toxic stew. It really makes no sense to me, Janine, that they are hunched over in anger at all times. They are, uh, I think, physiologically incapable of finishing a sentence or addressing any issue without mentioning Donald Trump's name five or ten times. He and I were looking at the Washington Post the other day, and he pointed out that there were six of the seven articles on the front page were all were about him, and only because the All-Star game was in town. Or it probably would have been seven out of seven. And so it tells you something. The obsessive outrage has been mainstreamed and regularized. And I think this is a very serious point, because mm -hmm. it's not just that the outrage and the who can out-crazy the next on cable TV has been accepted, it's now expected. You yeah. have a lot of print journalists who have contracts with these cable news stations. And so even though it has their print affiliation below their names, they're performing for the cameras and the viewers on those particular networks. I take complete offense with a smile on my face, but on behalf of those who suffered loss, grievous loss on 9-11, over 3,000 Americans gone. A crystal knock, 2,400 yeah. plus Americans killed at Pearl Harbor. My goodness, they're comparing it to this. What do the families feel when they hear that? Well, you know, and but, so it's completely over the top. And I just want to tell you something else. We can, you and I can complain about it, but I have a slightly different view. I'm not sure it really matters. I'm not sure it matters. The president's approval ratings are far higher than the Democrats in Congress than the mainstream media's. I don't think it matters because people curate from each and every event uh, what they think is most important to them. What's most important to them is that this president and the tradition of the presidents from the last 75 years, beginning with Eisenhower, met with the leader of the Kremlin. He's duty bound to keep us out of war. And he's trying to forge a conversation on issues that affect both countries and not the rest of the world. North Korea, the Middle East, Israel, Iran, nuclear proliferation, Syria, obviously the Ukraine. 
Uh, so many different issues to discuss with these different uh, heads, okay. of, so, heads of countries. So we've got a president who's doing his duty, which, as you say, is to keep us out of war and doing what every president has done for the last 75 years, which is meet with the leader of the Kremlin. And they're yelling, you know, the sky is falling. But, you know, when Blumenthal says, uh, and, and it is a 9-11 moment, just like before 9-11, what could they possibly be talking about? Everyone is like, you know, saying, what is it that these people are talking about? First of all, it gets somebody like Senator Blumenthal on the next TV to talk more crazy. I have to say, he represents the people of Connecticut. Connecticut suffered losses on 9-11 in the towers, Interesting. if not on those airplanes. So how could he possibly do that and equate that to the grievous loss of life, the worst terrorist attack on American soil in our nation's history. Let's recap last week because the media don't want to talk about it. The president started the week out at NATO where mm -hmm. he extracted $44 billion in contributions toward the shared defense from these countries on the way to securing commitments for hundreds of billions of dollars more into the future. Secretary Stoltenberg of NATO thanked President right. Trump. Right. On Twitter and, and in person, you know, publicly, saying thank you for doing this. It's because of his leadership and his stewardship that this is happening, that other countries are, are keeping their commitments the way that our country has. Then he went over to the U.K. to reaffirm our great and historic relationship by meeting with the Queen, who I think reviewed the guards for the first time, we're told, in about 70 years, also with Theresa May. And then over to his meeting with Putin, which is not unlike what other presidents have done with the leader of the Kremlin at the time. I want to say one more thing. It is just stark raving mad that when the media think about Russia, all they think about is election meddling. And right. when they think about the Supreme Court, all they think about is abortion. Yeah. There are so many different issues to talk about. The president has said, yes, he believes the intelligence Russia interfered, but Janine, it was unsuccessful interference. Yeah, there was no one collusion. Vote was changed. It didn't. And Rod Rosenstein said that last week when he announced the indictments right. of the 12, 12 Russians. People. He said, there's no evidence that it affected a vote or swung the electoral outcome. It is. Why doesn't the media say that? And why did Obama and Brennan and Clapper, the last two who are cable news pundits now, uh, yes. uh, why, why did they bury the intelligence that they had? They had it in the fall of 2016. I was the campaign manager at the time. They never came to me and said, we want you to see this. They buried it because they thought she would win and Trump would lose. And then all of a sudden, it became a big deal in December and January to well, them. You know what? Uh, you know, they buried it because they were part of, you know, when they talk about meddling in the election, I think the intelligence community and the DOJ and the FBI was meddling in the election. Anyway, Kellyanne Conway, always good to get your take on all of this. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judge Janine.